Welcome to Tax 1099. Hi, everyone. This is going to be a video on how to import from QuickBooks Desktop into the Tax1099.com platform using the web connector. First thing you'll do is sign into your Tax1099.com account. Once you get signed in, it should bring you to your dashboard. And you're going to want to scroll over here on the left on the menu, find import, select QuickBooks Desktop. When that pulls up here, um, this page should pop up, but then we should be getting a pop-up again. This is giving you the option to answer the workflow questions to decide which import you would want to use or that better suits you. Or you can simply choose, I'm an existing client and I know the process. For today's video, I'm going to go ahead and choose, I'm an existing client and I know the process, and then I'm going to go to exit. Once you exit, it's going to bring you back to this page prior to the pop-up. You will want to scroll down to, you'll see the QuickBooks Web Connector. You're going to select that. Give it just a moment and you should be getting another page to pull up. And this looks going to be your step-by-step -step instructions with the pictures showing you what to look for and how to do it. And all you simply do is you're gonna come back up here. You're looking for the green and blue oval where it says web connector download, click here. You're gonna to wanna to click that. Once you click it, your file should start downloading. Mine comes up here to the top right. I have seen them down here on the bottom right or bottom left. Once you get that, you do not have to open that file. You can simply minimize your tax1099.com. You're going to pull back, open your QuickBooks. And you should have already ran your... Uh, vendors uh, 1099 print and e-file forms but just in case you haven't we can go ahead and run them real quick so once you get back over here you're going to go to vendors 1099 forms print and e-file 1099 forms um, you're going to select yes on do you really want to print an e-file 1099 forms let that load and we're going to select to get started on the form 1099 NEC. So click on that. This is all my vendors that I have in the system. So I look, everybody looks fine. I'm going to hit continue. This is for letting you know that I have all their tax IDs. None of them are missing. None of their names are missing. I got their address. Some of them don't have a phone number. Don't worry about that. You can just hit continue. This next page is our mapping. You want to make sure that you have all the boxes selected that there would be needed for the NEC report. If there is one that you don't need, you can simply click over here on the drop down and select omit. I know that I should have one of them an amount in each. So I'm going to go ahead and select continue. You can view your included payments if you need to. If not, you don't have to. I'm going to go ahead and switch my year to why I'm up here. Get this right. And we'll make this be 23. And once you get that, there's mine. You can see it. You can close that out. Um, you can hit yes. It's fine if we save the report. No big deal. And then I just hit OK. And then I'm going to go to view excluded if you want to. Again, I'm going to change mine to this year. And run it. 
once we run it, you can scroll down. I mean, you can make the page as big as you want. I have none that will be excluded or they would be showing right there. So then I'm going to close this page. Yes, it's fine. I let it save it. And then you're going to come down here and you're going to hit continue. This next page will show me all of my NECs. And obviously I'm doing 2022 for any of my vendor, what I owe, what was included, and anything that was unmapped. If you have any numbers in the unmapped, they will not import over to tax 1099. So you, there's my total. I'm going to hit continue. On this page, on choosing a filing method, you simply want to hit save and close. Let that come up. And then you're going to come over here to file. We're going to do app management. It may say web services or anything with applications. You're going to select it and then choose update web services. At this time, the web connectors will pull up. And we're going to select add an application. And what we're looking for on this is usually in downloads. So you want to scroll up to downloads and you're looking for the file with your email address. Select that and hit OK or open. Um, this is to authorize the new web services with QuickBooks. You're going to hit OK. And wait, and then there's our, once you select here, the little check mark, it's going to ask you for your tax 1099 password. And this time, when you enter your password, you want to make sure you either add a dash capital N as in Nancy, which we'll be adding in this video since we're doing NECs. But if we were to do our miscellaneous, we would be adding a dash capital M. So let me enter my password here. Dash capital N. We're going to hit OK. If you save it, it doesn't change anything in your tax 1099 account, nor does it change anything in QuickBooks. It is just the password for this web connector. I'm going to choose yes. After you choose yes or no, you're going to come up here to update selected. Select that. Let it run. It should start slowing down between 15 and 35%. The slower it goes, believe it or not, it usually is a positive sign that it's working correctly. Um, to check this, I'm, both bars are at 100%. I'm going to go up here to where it says status, and I'm looking for last result, and I do have the OK. So at that point, you're going to hit exit. Minimize your QuickBooks again. Go back into your browser and open up your tax1099.com account. Now, at this point, you can simply select did not receive a web connector sync confirmation email. Click here to proceed. Or you can go to your email and look for the sync email that will be coming from tax1099.com. Since I was already here, I'm just going to choose did not receive a web connector sync confirmation email and follow through with that. There it goes. And then it's going to pull up. This is my import page or import grid page. Why it's processing. Here we go. So the first thing I'm going to look for is to see if it is my payer and everything synced over correctly from QuickBooks. And it looks like it did. And the next thing you do is make sure none of these have a red dot. And mine don't. And then you come up here. You want to check your name and make sure it doesn't have a red dot. If you have all green dots, you're simply going to select select all. Scroll back down and select next. At next, you should get this thing telling you how many will be imported over. There you go. I did 10 of 10 uploaded successfully. At this point, you can stop and exit out of tax 1099. If you come back, then your import would still be sitting in your dashboard. 
if you exit for any reason before you get the 10 of 10 or 1500 or 1500 were imported, you will have to start your import over again. And you want to make sure to be careful when you start importing that way that none of them were duplicated. From here, you would simply select all of them that you're going to submit on. And if you want the USPS mail, you're going to simply click USPS mail up there. Same with e-delivery, select it. You could also select your state filing at this time. Um, if any of the boxes are grayed out, it is due to that state being a combined federal state filing. So you wouldn't have to select it. Um, you can see I have one state there, PA, that I have to file on. After I select everything, I'm simply going to hit submit for this payer. Once you hit submit for this payer, it's going to bring you up talking about the scheduled date that even though we have a future scheduled date, the email and USPS mail will still go out on time. You simply select OK. Um, you're going to check the box that I have reviewed and verified the data and select OK. This next page is going to be our cost page. It simply tells you how much it is and it breaks it down, how much my filing fee was, my e-delivery service, um, state filing fee, and was $25.39. There's my total that I have in my prepay. So obviously I have enough and I would simply select net pay $25.39. It's going to beat me because I did not confirm my address over here. I simply just do like this, select. That way they know I confirmed it and it's going to, I go ahead and verify my email address so that I can get my receipt and know that I put it in. So there I'm going to hit again and pay. So now it's submitting my documents. I'm waiting for my receipt. It will give you a reference number. Okay, so there you go. And you're going to get this pop-up if it's before January the 8th, telling you that the, fi the IRS fire system is down, even though, so you may have hit submit at this time. Since there is a future scheduled date, you could go back and adjust anything that you needed to. I simply hit OK. There's your, please take a moment. If you want to take this survey, it is two questions. It is not about anybody that helped you at support. It's simply, would you recommend us to anybody? And there we go. I'm not going to do the review. I don't want anybody to think I was biased. So I'm simply going to click over here and maybe exit this. Although you can get a coupon if you do it. We're just going to hit back. And I'm going to go to right there. Um, click on my dashboard and it's going to show you that my file was submitted today, 10 NECs. There's my import. There's my button saying, the gray dot saying that it was submitted. And that is how you import with the web connector from QuickBooks Desktop into the tax1099.com platform. Hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.